Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of a very peculiar and actually somewhat mysterious star. Something that we actually have never seen before and something that absolutely surprised the scientists when they discovered it. But it all really started when they were looking at this very peculiar nebula. An infrared nebula roughly around 10,000 light years away from us. And we actually only discovered it very, very recently. Mostly because this nebula here is not visible in optical light. It seems to predominantly produce infrared light, which is one of the reasons why scientists were so interested in trying to investigate this place and to see how it was created and what actually is happening here. Now, most nebula, such as the very, very famous Crab Nebula that you see right here, produce light in all sorts of different frequencies. We usually see a lot of x-rays, we see a lot of optical emissions, obviously, and that's of course something that you can see in your telescope if you have a powerful enough telescope. But we also usually have infrared and radio emissions as well. And that's because a lot of this gas here interacts with a lot of different emissions coming from the center, which is where the neutron star is located. In this particular case, it's the neutron star known as Crab Pulsar, and that's probably one of the most famous pulsars out there. And so the very powerful emissions coming from this neutron star excite all of this gas surrounding the star, surrounding the neutron star, and basically create all sorts of illumination that's visible in various frequencies. Now, today this is kind of our understanding of most nebula, and this is how we think most of the light that we're observing is produced. But because we have so many new telescopes and so many new observations of different objects in outer space, we've been discovering new nebula that only produce certain frequencies of light, which is essentially how this nebula with the name you see on the screen was discovered a few years ago. And although originally only the infrared detections were known here, we now know that it also produces a lot of X-ray emissions as well. Which is something that the scientists only recently identified by using the beautiful XMM Newton Space Telescope that is able to observe X-rays with a lot of precision. And so by using these telescopes, the scientists whose paper you can find in the description below wanted to really find out what's happening in this nebula, what kind of a star may have formed in the middle, and more importantly, why is it that it's not actually visible in optical light and only visible so far in infrared and X-rays. But before we talk about what they actually found in the paper, it's also important to understand that generally nebula can be produced different ways. For example, going back to the Crab Pulsar here and Crab Nebula, this was produced as a result of a supernova where a relatively massive and a relatively large star essentially exploded, producing type 2 supernova and then leaving behind a neutron star that's now producing all of these flashy effects we're observing from planet Earth. But certain other nebula can be produced in different other ways. Like for example, we know that our sun is most likely going to produce a nebula as well. And these are called planetary nebula. That's not really the best name for them though. When in about 5 billion years, the sun will start sort of emitting all of the gas from the outer shell. And all of this gas will eventually lead to a somewhat large hydrogen and helium cloud that's then going to be illuminated by the sun as it becomes a white dwarf. So in other words, there's not going to be a supernova, but it's still going to produce a very beautiful nebula. But other types of nebula can also be produced in other very exotic formations and very exotic events. Like this one right here. When two white dwarfs collide, they actually do produce a very unique and a very specific nebula as well. And this is something that we have only started to figure out in the last few years. And what we realized is that, well, these types of nebula actually end up producing different types of clouds. They produce different types of gas that doesn't usually have a lot of hydrogen and helium in it. And because of this, they actually do result in nebula that are sometimes invisible in certain frequencies. And so the initial conclusion from the study of this nebula was indeed that it was most likely produced when two white dwarfs collided. But it, this didn't really explain a lot of things. It still didn't really explain what we were observing, and it definitely did not explain why the nebula was not visible in optical light. Because a collision here would produce a neutron star, and this would be powerful enough to produce enough emissions, including optical light emissions. So something unusual was going on here, and something was not really well explained. With the other mystery being that this uh, particular star was also producing a ridiculous amount of X-ray emissions. But in 2019, the scientists analyzing the star here discovered some unusual patterns and unusual properties that were actually coming from the star itself. First of all, this particular object was ridiculously bright. It was about 40,000 times the luminosity of our sun, meaning that it was definitely not a white dwarf and not a neutron star. 
This object was also producing very, very powerful solar winds and the winds here were reaching speeds of about 16,000 kilometers per second. And that's way faster than we can explain with any current models. It was also much, much brighter in the X-rays than a typical neutron star or a typical white dwarf as well. But more importantly, the mass of the star was more massive than a typical white dwarf. It was actually over what's known as the Chandrasekhar limit, which is the limit of how massive white dwarfs can be before they go supernova. So in other words, this was definitely more massive and more powerful than any white dwarf and even any neutron star we know. But all of the science still suggested that this was probably a result of a collision between white dwarfs, specifically the chemical composition of the system and the chemical composition of all of the gas nearby. Both the star and the gas contained a lot of silicon, a lot of sulfur, and a lot of neon, all of which surprisingly turned into extremely hot gas that sort of formed this unusual star. And all of these very hot gases were most likely producing all of this energy because they were basically creating a nuclear reaction, kind of like what happens in very old stars before they go supernova. But none of this really made sense just yet. None of this added up. And mostly because of what we know about white dwarfs. And specifically what we know and what we understand about white dwarf collisions. When they collide, they should produce a very large explosion or maybe in some cases produce a much more massive white dwarf. In some other cases, they might produce a neutron star, and essentially that's kind of what we think happens in most of these situations. But this is not at all what we're seeing here. What we're seeing here is an extremely powerful, very, very bright object, 40,000 times more bright than the sun itself, with extremely fast wind speeds of about 16,000 kilometers per second, and also extremely hot and way more massive than a typical white dwarf which actually suggests that what we're observing here is a unique star. It's a star that doesn't really fit into any description or any classification. It's a star that formed as a result of a collision. It also produces a very unique set of energies that only seem to be visible in infrared and x-rays. But it's also a star that's most likely not stable and that's also going to go supernova in possibly about 10,000 years from now. But at the moment, it seems that the star is doing just fine and is burning all of these elements that are usually present in some of the more massive stars, and overall can actually be described as an oxygen neon star, a very unusual mix of materials that seem to produce these very unusual types of energies. But because these elements burn with so much energy, they also obviously will not be able to last very long, so it possibly has a few thousand years left before it basically reaches the point of no return, and at this point it's definitely going to go supernova again with the second and final supernova being a lot more faint, producing some sort of a gamma ray burst, and more likely ended up producing a neutron star at the end. But this is in the very far future, possibly thousands of years in the future, so not something we're going to be seeing anytime soon. But I guess the question here is that why is it that this is such a unique object and why is it that we've never actually seen anything like this before? And one possible answer here is maybe in regards to the white dwarfs that collided. Both white dwarfs were probably slightly different from one another. One was probably made out of carbon and oxygen for the most part, whereas the second white dwarf was probably more oxygen and neon. And so when they actually collided, not all of the elements may have mixed together very well, and some of the elements might have just kind of stayed around and created a kind of a cloud around the core itself. And this of course resulted in producing some sort of an unusual object with a central core and a very powerful, very hot cloud of gas around it, spinning really fast as well. And so in some sense it actually recreated the conditions inside a typical, very, very hot, very old star. But that's not really the best explanation right now, and future studies might be able to answer what really happened here and what will happen at the end. For now, all we know is that this is definitely one of the most unique, most unusual, and definitely never before seen objects, and something that scientists will be studying for many years to come. And we obviously have no name for this just yet. You can call it a pseudostar, maybe an unstable remnant, or maybe a supernova remnant. But at the moment, this doesn't really have a good definition or a good explanation. But if one day we discover another object with very similar features, we'll definitely have to classify them and probably give them a proper name. Until then though, that's unfortunately all we know about this object. It's a really cool discovery, really cool analysis, and definitely a really interesting mystery. Until we learn more, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe support the channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find it in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.